we are looking into the say principle working principles of any chromatographic uh, column and we are looking into the solute movement theory from this uh, from uh, conducting this theory, undertaking this theory we will be able to predict at what exactly what retention time and the subject to the co column characteristic and the property of the solute the at what retention time the solute at a particular solute will be appearing in the outlet of the chromatographic column so that the separation will be prominent and you will be able to uh, trap the separation okay so uh, we are looking into the principles of the solute movement theory movement theory through the column The first definition we had, we, we defined various you know uh, porosity of the inter interparticle and inter intraparticle porosity, interparticle and intraparticle porosity. This is defined as epsilon e. This is defined as epsilon p. Then we talked about the bit porosity, total bit porosity. Then we talked about the various types of you know densities, bed densities, the particle density, and fluid density, the crystalline bed density, so and so forth. Next, we define a a quantity called Kd. Kd is nothing but the fraction of volume of pores that a molecule can penetrate. this is defined as v e minus v naught divided by v i we define different volumes v e is nothing but the elution volume volume of fluid at which the species exit from the column this volume is nothing the volume of fluid at which species exit from the column okay what is v not v not is external void volume between the particles between particles and V i is internal void volume. Okay. Now, for small molecules that can penetrate the entire interparticle volume, interparticle for small molecules which can penetrate the interparticle volumes, the value of K d is 1. molecules that penetrate entire intraparticle volume interparticle sorry volume v e is equal to v i plus v naught and k d is equal to 1 in that particular case. For larger molecules, that cannot penetrate interparticle volume because of size exclusion. V e will be is equal to V naught and in that case K d will be is equal to 0. Okay. So, for larger particle K d will be assuming a value of 0 which you cannot you know 
penetrate um, uh, to the inter particle space and it will be excluded because of its high larger size and for smaller particles the value of kd will be equal to 1 okay now let us once we have these types of definitions the basic definitions let us look into the what are the processes involved in a typical chromatographic column okay so let us look into the processes involved in a typical chromatographic column. Now, fluid containing the solid flows in the void volume outside the particle, right. Fluid with solid flows through void volume outside the particle. Now, the basic processes those are involved into this transport are given below. Number one is that solute diffuses through an external film to the particle. Diffusion of solute, solid diffuses through an external film. to the particle solute may absorb on solute may get absorbed on external surface or diffuse through the stagnant fluid into the pores okay solute so there may be uh, solute absorption on the outer surface of the of the particle or it may be going into the uh, inner pores of the of a particle itself because the particle is porous okay the solute may be absorbed on outer surface of solid as well as or, or they, they can diffuse through the fluid occupying intraparticle void okay now if the pores are ext so so they may be uh, either they may be physically absorbed on the other sur outer surface or they may be going in because the in a particle the particle is itself is porous the pores are filled with the liquid or the fluid and the solute may be diffusing through this liquid inside the into the pores inside the particle now if the pores are small this diffusion will be a hindered diffusion. Pores are smaller in size, diffusion of solute is hindered diffusion. And typically, the coefficient of hindered diffusion that means hin diffusivity, hindered diffusivity will be 2 to 3 orders of magnitude less than the bulk diffusivity. Okay. So, D hindered will be around three, 2 to 3 orders of magnitude less than the bulk diffusivity. Okay. So, third feature is third process that is involved is solute finds a vacant site and then absorbs by physical or electrical forces or chemical reactions. The adsorption of solute may be any of the three. Adsorption of solute may be a physical adsorption. It can be a chemical adsorption. It can be 
adsorption by electrical forces that means if you have a, an ionic nature that means there is um, uh, the suppose the solute is cationic and and the you will be having anionic sites on the adsorbents they can, there may be electrostatic attraction or electrostatic attachment of the solutes over the solid matrix okay so fourth process will be while ads, while adsorbed solute may diffuse along the surface of the solid this is known as surface diffusion this is another process surface diffusion may take place uh, on on the surface itself that means the solute is adsorbed on a particular position of the solid particles then it diffuses along its surface that means it what does it mean that means the previous site has, has become vacant that site will be available for adsorption on another solid solute so that solute will be adsorbed then again it can move uh, along the surface by diffusion and then another solid can be uh, adsorbed over it now the last one is even after adsorption solute dissolves to some extent and there will be an equilibrium of adsorption desorption cycle right it is not like not any not normal adsorption type of process next the it diffuses uh, that means solute diffuses through the pores pores and comes back to external film and into moving fluid or your mobile phase that means after desorption it diffuses through the pores it comes back to the ex through the external film and it again goes goes into the uh, your your mobile phase okay now a given molecule can adsorb and desorb a number of times so they it's not that it will be a one time affair a given molecule can be adsorbed or dissolved number of times while in moving fluid that means in the mobile phase the solute is carried along the interstitial fluid velocity v solute is carried by interstitial fluid velocity v until it diffuses into another particle and where whole process is repeated until it encounters and enters another particle where the whole process is repeated that means again it will be adsorbed it may be adsorbed into the pore then it gets get, it may be, there may be surface diffusion it may be again dissolved it may be dissolved through the fluid uh, in the, in the pore it will come to the external uh, film and then it will be dissolved again the uh, moving fluid so it can be the same sol uh, solute particle can encounter into different particles can get into it and then come back so that's why the whole process will be delayed okay so when it will be coming out there will be a finite residence time 
it will not be instantaneous. This means what? This basically you are obstructing the so in in the this whole process is basically you are obstructing the path of a solute particle in by the by imposing the column. So in a sense, the 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 uh, mobile phase that will be coming out of the column it will it will not be having instantaneously the value of the solute presence of the solute there. The presence of the solute will be delayed. That means there will be a finite residence time for a particular solutes and the hindrance to the solute particles offered by the bed will be different for different solutes because it depends on the solute characteristic as well. That means, the solute A can be absorbed more easily by, by, the, by the column material. So, the solute B will be coming faster in the, in the outer phase in the, in the element phase and if and, and so therefore, there will be a finite difference of the residence type between the solute B and solute A. So, you can easily separate them out. Okay, that is the idea. So, let us talk about and, and this migration of the solute is obviously a function of several things. Migration of solute through the bed or through the column is a function of epsilon p, epsilon e, k d, v that is the uh, solute interstitial velocity and of course, the sorption equilibrium. The sorption equilibrium is nothing but the adsorption equilibrium. That means, this adsorption equilibrium will be different for different types of solutes. So, of course, when you put this, this it simply means that this migration of solute through the column will be function of nature of the solute as well. So, sorption equilibrium will be will be in turn a function of nature of the solute. That means, same solute cannot be adsorbed in the same manner of another solute on the same adsorbent, they will be different in nature. So, that will be di typically dictated by the adsorption equilibrium. Okay. Now, let us look into a schematic diagram of a packed bed a differential column. So, let us this suppose this is a packed bed, this is a cylindrical column with a packed bed. and we are talking about a cross section of height delta z. Okay. So, this is an elemental area of the column. Now, external what is the external void volume? external void volume is given as epsilon e multiplied by a c times delta z right. Epsilon e is the volute fraction uh, void fraction. So, epsilon e multiplied by a c into delta z is the differential volume of this differential element. A c is the area of cross section delta z is the height. So, this gives the volume differential volume of the element that we are talking about within this height delta z that should be multiplied by the epsilon e that will give you the external void volume. Okay. So, a c is nothing but pi d square by 4 or cross section area, area of bed okay. and internal void volume let us look into that internal volute void volume within the particle this is given as 1 minus epsilon e that is the other void fraction multiplied by epsilon p because epsilon p is the void volume of the uh, inside the particle multiplied by a c times delta z right. Now, solute in the bed it can be in the mobile phase or in the external volume or it can be stagnant liquid phase inside the particle or it can be sorbed on the particle. So, there may be three types of location where is you can find a solute inside the bed. Okay. So, solute inside the bed is located either any one of these or all of them or some two of them. Okay. 
first one it will be in the mobile phase. in external volume, secondly it can be in the stagnant liquid phase let us say liquid phase inside the particle or it can be sorbed to the particle, adsorbed to the particle itself. Okay. The solutes, those are outside or those exit the column. they can be only in the mobile phase. Mobile phase only that means, we are not allowing uh, bleeding of any solute solid particles from the column. So, any so solid particles or the adsorbent column will be kept intact within the column itself none of them will be coming out or it is bled out from it. Okay. Now, let us consider the movement of an incremental mass of solute added to the bed. Let us consider the movement of an incremental mass. Incremental mass means the mass of the of the of the solute that is present within that differential element we, had, we have just considered. Okay an incremental mass of solute added to the bed. Okay. So, what it will lead? It will change, it will lead to change in fluid concentration delta c and that will lead to change in amount absorbed by delta q. Okay. So, fraction of solute in the mobile phase is what? mobile phase is given out as amount of solute in mobile phase divided by the total of total amount of solute present in the segment. solute present. So, this is now nothing but amount of solute in mobile phase divided by the amount of solute in mobile phase plus stationary phase plus amount adsorbed. So, there are three, three, three locations you said they can be present. right? the solute may be within the column, it may be present in the mobile phase, it can be present in the stationary phase within the uh, within the solid or it can be in the form of adsorbed part of the on the solid surface itself. So, in the denominator the amount of solute must be in mobile phase, mobile fluid plus stationary fluid plus amount sorbed or adsorbed on the solid particles. Okay. Now, 
amount of solute solute increment in mobile phase because of delta c solute increment in mobile phase it will be how much it will be volume of the segment i am talking about that elemental volume that we just discussed volume of a uh, segment or elemental volume multiplied by the fraction which is mobile fluid fraction of mobile phase concentration in moles per liter multiplied by the concentration moles per liter okay so volume of the segment will be delta z multiplied by area of cross section of the segment fraction of the mobile phase will be nothing but epsilon e right and what is the concentration in moles per liter that is delta c okay there is a solute amount of uh, uh, solute increment in mobile phase so amount in mobile phase amount of solute in mobile phase mobile phase divided by the total amount of solute in the segment will be what the amount of solute in mobile phase will be given by this quantity so we put this value in the denominator in the numerator delta z ac epsilon e times delta c and the total amount of solute present in the segment that means in the in the column itself it will be having in three locations one is in the mobile phase another is a stationary phase within the pore and another is the adsorbed in the form of adsorbed phase on the solid so the first one will be delta z ac times epsilon e times delta c that is the amount present on the ex mobile phase plus delta z ac there is a volume multiplied by 1 minus epsilon e times epsilon p delta c times kd and delta plus delta z times ac multiplied by 1 minus epsilon e multiplied by 1 minus epsilon p times rho s times delta q okay so the this amount will be, is present in the mobile phase this amount of solute is present in the within the pore of the particle delta z times ac is the cross is, is the elemental volume multiplied by 1 minus epsilon e 1 minus epsilon e is the void volume that is present within the particle and within the particle the uh, the void fraction is epsilon p so it should be multiplied by epsilon p multiplied by delta c okay but it entirely depends whether k d is equal to 1 or not k d or k d is k d 1 or 0 that means k d is what the k d is the amount of the solute that will be at all moving into the pores or not by the size exclusion if it is if it is larger then k d will be equal to 0 then there is no question of the solute present within the pore if k d is assuming some value some amount of solute will be moving into the pore so we should multiply it by that fraction k d okay so th so this amount is the amount present in the mobile phase this um, this term will indicate the amount present in the solid phase and what is the amount this amount is 1 minus epsilon e so that means the porous in that is the porous particle volume void fraction of the porous particle multiplied by 1 minus epsilon p that means the the within the pore that the pore, within the particle the the pores are present so 1 minus epsilon p is that volume volume fraction which where the the solid material is present. So, 1 minus epsilon e into 1 minus epsilon p is that overall compared to the overall bed, what is the solid material is present on that it will be adsorbed delta q will be the amount that will be adsorbed over here and rho is, rho is, is the density of the solid particle. So, this is the uh, this third term presents or it represents the amount of solute that will be adsorbed on the solid particle. Okay. So, what is rho s? Rho s is nothing but the solid density. Rho 
and what is Q? Q and C are related to the adsorption isotherm equilibrium related by adsorption isotherm. Okay. Now, you are in a position to calculate the interstitial fluid velocity or average velocity. So, if you have interstitial velocity v, then the average velocity velocity of solute in the bed is let us say u s and what is u s? u s is nothing but v multiplied by friction of solute in mobile phase, fraction of solute in mobile phase. And what is the fraction of solute in mo mobile phase that you have already found out? There is the amount of solute in the mobile phase mobile phase divided by total amount of solute in the column. Okay. So, we can we can and we, we already had this expression the, the total fraction of solute present in the mobile phase and we just put the expression. So, U s is nothing but V divided by 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 plus 1 minus epsilon e divided by epsilon e epsilon p k d plus 1 minus epsilon e divided by epsilon e 1 minus epsilon p rho s delta q by delta c. So, basically the expression that we have written earlier I am going to put this expression this is the fraction of solute present in the mobile phase. So, the amount present in the mobile phase divided by total amount present in the column. So, I just divide it by delta z a c epsilon e and de by delta c in the numerator as well as the denominator. So, these will be cancelled from the first term. So, you will be getting the, the rest three terms in the denominator by after, after division. Okay. So, u s is the velocity if now, now, now let us look into the absorption isotherm relations. If isotherm is linear, Q is equal to m times c, where m is the isotherm constant and m will be typically a function of temperature. Okay. So, delta Q by delta c will be a constant m. So, it is basically dq dc, right? delta Q by delta c will be nothing but m. If isotherm is nonlinear, for nonlinear isotherm, let us say Q is equal to A C to the power n. What is the isotherm called? It is a von Lick isotherm. If you remember, there are several adsorption isotherms like Langmuir, von Lick, uh, for so on and so forth. Okay. For a nonlinear isotherm, Q is equal to A C to the power n. Uh, limit c tends to infinity delta q to delta c tends to 0 right c tends to 0 delta q by delta c will be nothing but del q del c and this will be a which may be a function of temperature n c to the power n minus 1. So, this parameter a can be a function of temperature as well. 
Okay. Now, case 1 for very large molecule. So, delta q by delta c can be can be written as a derivative with respect to c of the q expression. Okay, because you know the q expression is a function of c from the isotherm expression and you can derive uh, take the derivative of with respect to c and can uh, get an another expression in terms of concentration. For very dilute for, for, for very large molecule, k d will be equal to 0, right? k d itself will be equal to 0 and case 2 is for small molecule. That means, the second term will not be present in the earlier expression in the denominator. For small molecules, k d will be equal to 1. So, smaller molecules move slower because they will be moving into the pores of the adsorbent particles. So, much of them will be adsorbed. So, the amount that is present in the mobile phase will be less and less. So, whenever the mobile phase coming out of the column, the amount will be dilute initially, then uh, some amount of the things when they will dissolve, then they will come in the mobile phase. So, the movement smaller molecule movement of the smaller particles or smaller molecules will be much slower. Okay. Now, next is next consider the third case. In case of strong adsorption, molecules move slower as velocity decreases, right. In case of linear for linear adsorption, solute velocity does not depend on the solute concentration. Velocity is independent of solute concentration. Why it will be independent? Because if the isotherm relation is linear, you have seen that delta q by delta c will be always m, it does not depend on the concentration at all. For nonlinear adsorption or for nonlinear isotherm, it is for linear isotherm, adsorption isotherm, for nonlinear adsorption isotherm. Solute velocity it depends on the solute concentration. Solute concentration, but at low concentration, the linear adsorption is valid. Okay, at lower concentration, at lower solute concentration linear adsorption isotherm is valid. Why so? If you look into the adsorption nonlinear adsorption isotherm, so this is a typically nonlinear adsorption isotherm, it will be something like this. Okay it may be something like this. Okay. Now, if you talk about a lower concentration range, for example, in this range of concentration, the adsorption can be considered to be a linear part. For lower range of concentration, the isotherm we can consider it is a linear part of the nonlinear. Uh, overall, it may be nonlinear, but for a small region within the, uh, for a very small concentration, it will be linear. Okay. So, what is z? z is the distance it traveled along the column length. Okay. So, z is nothing but u s time t. If you put the value of z as the total column length l, 
then t will be nothing but the retention time okay so z is the distance traveled by the solute the solute front you can say solute front within chromatographic column okay now if the z is replaced by the l the t will be nothing but the retention time of that particular solute now if we plot z versus t if z versus t is plotted we get a linear slope of us so if, if it is plotted because us z is nothing but us time t now if you plot z versus t it becomes the it becomes linear and the slope is nothing but the us the solute velocity okay now by looking into the z versus t curve one can interpret the separation efficiency how that i'll be demonstrating in the next slide so let us consider this curve this is, this is the most vital curve vital curve and vital you know description of this chapter let us say this is a feed and feed is composed of two materials let us say a and b two solutes are there a and b ok now we plot here c a by c a naught or let us say c b by c b naught ok what is c a naught and c b naught c a naught and c b naught are the inlet concentration of species a and b in the column and c a and c b are the concentration at the exit of the column of both the species ok so so this value is 1 this value is 0 we plot c a by c a naught and c b by c b naught versus time in the feed phase we give a at, the, at this particular instance at this at this particular time interval we give a pulse that contains c a naught c a both the solutes a and b that means we are injecting into the feed in the feed sample we are injecting a pulse of the sample containing a and b so therefore it gives a region from 0 to 1 ok so this is the feed pulse now we plot l versus t l is the length of the column ok now these two species a and b will be having a velocity u a and u b respectively depending on their nature of adsorption and so on and so forth so therefore the u a and u b will be different they will be not equal they are they are not be they are not equal so the slope of l versus time we have already seen l versus time will be having the slope slope of the individual solute velocity so the slope of the solid velocity will be different because the two components are different okay the expressions are different so you will be getting this is this slope is u a and similarly at the end of this injection time you will be getting the same slope which are parallel to the other one and you will be getting u a right. So, at this particular time point you will be getting only a co component a out of the mixture a and b. Similarly, here since the velocity of component b is different than that of a. So, this velocity this slope will be different ok. So, that is in that case you will be getting a slope u b here and at the end of the injection time you will be getting another slope which will be exactly parallel to u b of u b and you will be getting a component b there ok. So, this component this period where you will be getting a and this period here you will be getting b that means at this time t 1 you will be getting only component a and at this time t 2 you will be getting only component b and these two components will be separated out they will be fractionated ok. Now, if you so this is within the column ok 
in the next I will just plot just below it this gives the output output of column. So, again I will put it at 1 a scale between 1 and 0. Okay. At this retention time versus time, okay. In all the all the three curves, the x-axis is versus time. At this retention time, you will be having only component A. So this will be a you will be getting a pulse of component A here. This will be con containing only component A, and at this time t2, you will be getting a pulse of component B. Okay. So, this is a pure component A, this is a pure component B, they will be separated out over a substantial amount of time and this separation will be depending on the nature of adsorb adsorbent and nature of the mobile phase. That means, if you change the column from C18 to C8, then it, this, this, this uh, difference may be shortened or no, it may be widened. If it will be widened, then you will be, you can, you can uh, analyze them better. Okay. So, they will not overlap. So, this is the principle of chromatographic separation. So, basically the solute movement will be different for different solutes in the chromatographic column because the uh, adsorption intensity of the solute over the column are different and uh, of course, the nature is also different. So, therefore, the solute movement velocity will be different for the two solutes and they will be appearing in the outlet stream which will be detected by the refractive index or UV detector at, at different points of time which will be separated to a large extent, so that you can separate them out or you can detect them out quite easily. So, this chromatographic method is utilized for the separation number 1, number 2 for the easy analysis. Okay. Fine. Now, let us look into the various salient features of this particular figure. This figure number 1, it, it demonstrates the uh, separation efficiency between species A and B in chromatographic column. Number two, the physico chemical. and adsorption parameter are different for different solutes. Therefore, their linear velocity will be different. Therefore, their solute velocity is different. So, because of the difference in solute velocity, you can have different concentration in the, at the outlet at different point of time. Now, let us look into the application of solute movement theory to chromatography. This, this this whole theory the, the uh, up to the, the figure that we have described it is known as the solute movement theory in the column okay now let us try to apply apply it to chromatography for small feed pulse what do you mean by small feed pulse because it, it means that I inject the feed over some microsecond, let us say, let us say uh, uh, 30 seconds, let us say 5 second. Okay. So, if the feed pulse duration is small, it is called small feed pulse. Okay. The peak maximum exits, the maximum peak exits at a retention time. T R 1, T R 
and this T r is nothing but L by U s, right. There is a retention time is length of the column divided by the solute velocity. For fairly wide pulse, the retention time is corrected. What is the retain, uh, retain corrected retention time? T r is corrected and corrected retention time is given as L by U s plus T f divided by 2. What is T f? Is the duration of feed pulse. If T f is very small for this case, this T f will be extremely small and T f by 2 will be negligible. Otherwise, this correction has to be added to the retention time. Suppose, you would like to inject the uh, feed over a large period of time, then you have to take this uh, correction T f plus T f by 2 should be added to the retention time. Okay. Uh, if you look into the concentration versus time plot, then they look something like this. Suppose there are two, two peaks you are going to get for two components A and B and this is T r 1 and this is T r 2. So, this is the retention time 1 and this is T r 2. Now, if you just plot, if you just get two tangents here, this is known as W 1 or the width. W 1 and if you just draw this tangents there, let us say this is W 2. This W 1 is given as 4 times sigma 1 and W 2 is given as 4 times sigma 2. That means, width of the peak is connected to standard deviation of the peak. So, sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the standard deviation of the peak. of the peaks. So, if you, if this uh, peak is very sharp, then you are going to get a very good you know the standard deviation is small. The, the inaccuracy involved in your measurement will be extremely small. So, the interpretation is if W 1, W 2 are quite small, the inaccuracy in involved in your interpret in your measurement will be small. If they are significant, they are larger that means, inaccuracy involved is a little bit more compared to the previous one. So, this this is the general theory of any chromatographic column uh, for that matter, how to uh, get the separation and detect the you know, concentration at the outlet of the chromatograph and analyze the thing. Now, in the next class what I will do, I will just take up a simple problem with various you know parameters for example, it is uh, isotherm characteristics and uh, you know density of the solid materials, density of liquid materials or, and the various properties we will be, will be, will be giving and I will just check for two solutes what will be the typical retention time it comes out. Okay. And there are two things, one is uh, uh, adsorption, another is the desorption. Basically, uh, suppose you are, a, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are having a column which is not filled up with any liquid okay. and then you are passing a uh, uh, passing a solute, so, so uh, passing a solution containing the solute, so solute will be getting adsorbed over here. Then you will like, you would like to dissolve the column because you would like to uh, clean the column so that it will be ready for the next experiment. So then you have you you send the let's say aqueous solution or the distilled water solution, and there will be desorption of the column. So anyway, we'll be looking into a problem in uh, more detail in the next class and then we will move on to the next separation process that is the ion exchange separation process. Okay. Thank you.